Good morning. Hallelujah. Kimberly in England, I saw your message, but we are in conference mode. So next week, we'll settle into all of that. Thanks for your patience. Facebook, let me know if you can hear me. Good morning. I just need one person to know. One person to let me know, not 50. Good morning. invite your followers we're going to get started in one minute both y'all slack a lack in Facebook and Periscope come on let's get this shared this is a barn burner call come on let's pro let's let's roll Come on and hit that share button, invite. We're starting in 10 seconds. 
spirit and the bride agree. The spirit and the bride agree. The spirit and the bride agree. Spirit and the bride agree. When the world is shaken and breaking, when everything around is darkness and chaos, my soul will find an anchor, an anchor in you, Lord. And I will awaken, I will awaken the dawn. Cause I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Good morning, everyone. Jennifer LeClaire here with you, Senior Leader of the Awakening House of Prayer Movement, founder of the Ignite Network, and of course, author of our devotional Mornings with the Holy Spirit, listening daily to the still, small voice of God. God is good all the time. Today's devotion titled, Give Me Your Full Attention. And here's what I heard the Lord say. I don't want to compete for your attention. So just for a few moments, give it all to me. Don't think about the errands you must run. Don't think about the phone calls you must return. Don't think about all you must do today. Just sit in my presence. The grace to handle your day is available as you need it. I am your grace. Fellowship with me for a few minutes and everything else will be much easier. <clears throat> That's a good word. I don't care where you're from. Today's scripture references Matthew 6, 33, Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42, and 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. And the prayer starter for today, I will sit in your presence and rejoice with you. Help me to put my mind on you during this time and to lay aside the nagging cares of the world so I can seek your heart and receive your grace. I am willing. Please help me. And of course, He will. He is your very present help in time of need. Your helper, your standby, your advocate, your comforter, your counselor, your intercessor. Everything you need Him to be in the moment, that is what He is because He loves you. And Father, today we do. We love you. We thank you, Lord, for your love, the great love with which you loved us. You are awesome. You are mighty. There is no other God like you, a God so pure in his motives. Your motive is to bless. Your motive is to save. Your motive is to love. That is who you are. Everything you do is motivated and filtered through the lens of love. God, we thank you that you love us with an undying love and a love that was willing to die. We thank you, Lord, that you are so unusual. You call us in your word, a peculiar people, but you're a peculiar God for what other God would sacrifice his own son to pay the price for the sinners of the world that one not might not perish. God, we thank you for your peculiar love, your unusual love, the love that just won't quit, the love that wants to chase us down even in that place of sin and rescue us from the pit of darkness. We thank you, Lord, that you are good and your love it's overwhelming. So Father, we allow ourselves this morning to be overwhelmed by your love. Lord, we say overwhelm us. Let your love flow flow over us like a river. Let your love like a deluge come in, like a tsunami come in, like a hurricane come in. Let your love come in at full force and just knock us over, causing us to lay prostrate, prostrate on our faces, loving you back and saying, Lord, we surrender. We give you praise and honor and glory today because you are the one who loves us unconditionally. You don't always like everything we say, do, or think, but you love us. We were created in your image. In the image of God, we were created. Male and female, you created us. Oh, as a family, as a body. We thank you, Lord, that you created us in your image. Therefore, you are well pleased with us. You've blessed us. You blessed Adam and Eve and said, be 
be fruitful and multiply. And you've blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. That everything we would put our hand to, it would prosper. That everywhere we tread our foot, it would belong to us. You've given us authority and you've given us a mandate called the Great Commission to go into the highways and the byways and get people saved and make disciples of nations. Father, we thank you that we will be about your business, not any longer merely being concerned about our heart, but being concerned about the hearts of those who don't even know you, who don't even understand your goodness, who have been painted a picture of you that is false and mean-spirited by a religious demon that wants to keep people out of the kingdom. Jesus said, woe to you scribes and Pharisees, for you won't go in and you won't let anyone else go in either. I thank you, Lord, that this spirit of religion must fall to the way of love. And so we thank you, Lord, that we would be those who would not walk with a hypocritical, uppity, prideful, haughty spirit because we think we've got something better than the rest of the world, but we would walk in a spirit of compassion and mercy and grace and, and, and just uh, a yearning to see these ones saved because they're, but, but, but for the grace of God, there go we. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the way of love. Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. And if you are the way and you are love, that means love is the way. Love is the way. Love is the way. Love is the truth. Love tells the truth. Love doesn't let people go to hell because we were too embarrassed or too ashamed or too nervous or too afraid to speak forth the name of Jesus. Love is the, the, the end all of life. Did you learn to love? Love is everything. It's all boiling down. It's all going to come down to love. Everything we do that was motivated by love will be uh, uh, rewarded in eternity, but all the rest will burn up like hay and stubble because it wasn't pure. God, we don't want to waste our time. We don't want to waste our time in this time we have left, whether it's uh, 70 years or 50 years or 20 years, however old we are. We don't want to waste the time we have left being so preoccupied with our own needs that we neglect to see the need of somebody else who doesn't know you. We want the eternal rewards. God, all this in this life is going to fade away. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. And I just lift up right now every person on this call and all those in your circle of life that you love and who don't know God. And I just lift them up right now in the name of Jesus. And I say, Lord, send uh, the minister, send laborers in their life to sow a seed of the gospel. Send one to sow a seed. Send the other one to water the seed. And Lord, send another one to reap the harvest. God, we ask you in the name of Jesus to do what only you can do, to do the impossible, to bring sinners in into repentance and then into your kingdom for your glory. God, I thank you, Lord. I break the bind blinders of deception off of all of those represented, those loved ones, those friends, those co-workers, those ones that you've been believing God for. We just collectively cry out to you, Lord, and say, give us these souls. Give us these souls, Lord. Give us these souls. Would you give us these souls for your glory, for your son's sake, God, because he died to pay the price for them, God. Why should he be, uh, why should he have to watch and suffer in his passion any longer? Watching these ones go to hell, watching these ones suffer in the flesh. God, we're asking Lord to give them a Damascus road experience, to give them a Nebuchadnezzar experience where they suddenly realize the prodigal son experience where they suddenly realize, wait a minute, I am living below my means. I am living below. I am living under and I should be over. I should be walking. Lord, give them a revelation of your love because that's what changes everything we lift them up to you right now in Jesus name and we say do it Lord do what only you can do but do it through us help us get somebody else's family member friend or co-worker saved so that we can believe you that someone else will do the same for our family because your word says in Ephesians that what we make happen for somebody else you'll make happen for us so help us Lord not just to pray for our family and friends but to pray for those that we see just on the street or to pray for those that we see in the subway 
or in an airplane that we might not ever be able to speak to as they walk by, but ones that need your love and ones that need the hope and the faith that you offer for those who come into your kingdom. We call them in right now in Jesus name. Lord, bless us indeed. Enlarge our territory. Give us more influence to make an impact in your kingdom for your kingdom in the name of Jesus. Let your hand be upon us and keep us from evil in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for your grace. We thank you, Lord, for your grace. We thank you, Lord, for your grace. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Now let me get back into this floodgates. We're on day 35. We're on day 35. Day 35 of the floodgates prophecy. Day 35 of 40. We got five more days to go, people. Just five more days. You've pressed. You've prodded. You've explored. You've discovered. You've been healed. All kinds of things have happened to people all around the world. Pressing into the head of the floodgates to sit in the presence of God and to seek that which has been lost. Seek what needs to be found. To seek His face. To seek His heart. To seek His hand. To seek His wisdom. We've been seeking, asking, repenting. We've been doing all these things day 35 of 40 there are mantles in the floodgates ah there are mantles in the floodgates. There are mantles in the floodgates. There are mantles in the floodgates. Some of you have been, have been, uh, you, you've, you've, uh, some of you, you, you have ragged mantles instead of rugged mantles because of the warfare that you've endured. Many are positioned for new mantles, new anointings, new graces. It's time for a mantle upgrade and you'll find it in the floodgates. You'll find it in the presence of God. You'll find it in that place where God is pouring out his spirit, where God is letting it rip like a river, flow like a river. I thank you, Lord, for the new mantles in the floodgates. I thank you, Lord, for everyone on this call who has had their mantle ripped and torn, who has had their mantle desecrated instead of consecrated, who has had their mantle uh, just, just, just threads just ripped out one by one by the enemy just thread by thread where you can't even patch it anymore because there's not enough a cloth left around it for the patch to hold on to and you don't want to ah you don't want to patch it anymore anyway because Jesus said who puts a new patch on an old garment I've been studying this now who puts an old patch on a new garment you can't do it because it's going to rip the new garment and then it's all for nothing you got to stop trying to patch your mantle precious you got to stop trying to patch your mantle beloved you've got to stop trying to patch that old thing that can no longer be repaired and you've got to step into the new I said it's time to grab hold of the new mantles some of you, your mantles were stained by sin. Your life was stained by sin. Oh, you don't like me now. I'm talking about sin. Why did she have to go there? Oh, well, too bad. You're going to get free today. Some of your mantles have been stained by sin. Not even the sin of like an immorality or the sin of like a, a lying or a theft, but the sin of disobedience to answer the call. Ah, I hope you're getting this today. Some of you, the Lord mantled you. Some of you, the Lord anointed you. Some of you, the Lord graced you. Some of you, the Lord poured out his provision upon you to answer a call, to go forth in his power and do his will. Some of you, the Lord gave you this mantle. Some of you, the Lord gave you like a coat of many colors and you were favored above all in your family. Some of you, the Lord gave you a special armor. He gave you his very own armor. And it was shiny and new, but you disobeyed. Ah, you disobeyed. You didn't do with that mantle, with that anointing, with that grace, with that provision, with that armor, what he called you to do because you were afraid. And fear, ah, fear has eroded your mantle and sin has stained your mantle. I don't know who I'm talking to. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk according to the spirit and not according to the lust of the flesh. No condemnation, but I'm talking to somebody. The devil tricked you. The devil told you, you can't do this. You're not, you're, you're, you're not going to succeed. You're going to fail. They're going to make fun of you. You don't have enough. You're not ready. That's a big lie. That is a big lie. Yes, some people aren't ready. It's so fascinating to me that the ones who think they aren't ready 
are usually the ones who are ready enough to go, to be sent. The ones who think they are ready are the ones who need to sit their fanny down on a bench and get some humility. Because when God calls you to do something great, when God calls you to do something larger than yourself, larger than life, when God mantles you and commissions you to do something that's such a big vision that it would just take the impossible to bring it to pass, you're never going to think you're ready. And if you think you're ready, then you're full of pride. You don't have to think you're ready to know that God is able. Ah! You don't have to think you're ready. You don't have to believe that you're ready to know that God is able. Where we are weak, He is strong. Come on now. Where we are weak, when we are weak, when we are weak, He is strong. Our weaknesses are perfected by His strength. So you're never going to feel ready. I'm breaking down that lie today. So many of you will believe that lie. I'm not ready. I don't feel ready. Beloved, it's not about how you feel. It's about what you believe. If God said it, that settles it. I believe it. Ah, we're going to tear down that lie today of I'm not ready. I don't feel ready. You know what? I don't ever feel ready for anything I do. I just get up and believe God's going to show up. Ah, I said, I just get up and believe God's going to show up. Ah, let me say it one more time. I just get up and believe God is going to show up. I don't feel ready. I've been on some big platforms. I've been in some crazy nations doing some wild things behind the scene that I can't even talk about publicly. I don't feel ready all the time. I feel prepared, but not ready. What's the difference? I prepare myself for the opportunity. I prepare myself to walk with that mantle that God has given me to see deliverance come to nations. I prepare myself. But that doesn't mean I feel ready. But that doesn't mean I don't do it. Beloved, prepare yourselves. God has mantled you. I break every lie that I, the, the lie of I'm not ready. We break that, Lord. We repent. Ah, we repent. We repent for believing this lie. Because your word says that you are faithful to complete the good work that you started in us. We're a work in progress, all of us. God, help us not to not to be perfectionists. Where we think if it were, if we're not perfectly ready, we don't feel it. Ah, come on, ah, Jesus, would you help us? Lord, cleanse our mantles of the stain of sin, of disobedience, because of fear, because of rejection, ah, ha, ha, shikete, because of shame. I break it in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that you are the God of second chances and you, the gifts and callings are without repentance. So we're going to wear that mantle and we're going to wear it with, with, with a sober mind. And we're going to wear it, these new mantles that are being poured out in the floodgates, we're going to wear them with a, with a, with a satisfaction, with a contentment, with a, with a Holy Ghost ease, with a grace. We're going to wear these mantles with a pride in our God, not a pride in ourselves. We're going to wear these mantles with a confidence in our God. The confidence that Christ in us is the hope of glory. We're going to wear these mantles and we're going to do the work of the ministry. We're going to do the work, the greater works of Christ. We're going to do these things. We're going to wear these mantles and we're going to guard the anointing on our life. Oh boy. We're going to guard the anointing on our life. We're not going to allow people to pimp us out. Ah. We're not going to allow people to use us and abuse us. We're not going to allow it anymore because it doesn't advance your kingdom. God, we are not going to allow any more things in our lives that do not advance your kingdom. Relationships that take away, 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 and leave us drained. We're not going to allow the enemy's assignments through people to drain us any longer. We're going to discern it. God, help us discern it. Because I just saw a picture of people just tearing at your mantle. Almost like, if I had to describe what it looked like, almost like a rock star where they're just trying to rip their, just just trying to get a piece of their clothing. Because they don't care about you. There's some people, some of you are surrounded with people who don't care about you. They just care about what you can do for them, what you can give them. They don't care about you. And they're ripping your mantle to shreds. 
That's why you need a new one. They're ripping it. They just want a piece of it as a memorial, as a memento, as something where they can go and tell their friend, I got a piece of that mantle. I sit in the presence of... Oh, come on now. Pastors, guard your mantle. Be open to the people, but not so open that you're drained dry by an assignment of the enemy. They don't want help. They need help, but they don't want help. Those Jezebels who come around you, they don't want help. They need help, but they don't want help. They just want to tear you down. Lord, help us to guard our mantles. Help us to guard the anointing that's on our life. Help us, Lord, to determine in our hearts to get the right amount of sleep, the proper nutrition. Come on, can I get practical? Some of you are not worn out because you got warfare. Some of you are worn out because you because of what you ate. Ah, y'all don't like me today. I don't care. Somebody's getting free. Somebody is getting free. There are new mantles. There are new mantles for new ministries. There's an upgrade on your mantle, but you've got to get in the floodgates. There's a cleansing of your mantle. There's a deliverance. There's a freedom that you have not yet tasted. Father, help us today to step into that place where we can receive from you the new coat, the new mantle, the new cloak that we can receive. Some of you are up for a double portion. Some of you are up for a triple portion. Some of you are up for something so big. In other words, it's your time. Some of you have been striking the ground with your mantle and nothing is happening. It's because you're worn out. And you're not hearing from the Lord about when to strike and where to strike. When Elijah struck the ground, when Elisha struck the ground, the waters parted. Some of you haven't seen a miracle in your life in far too long. It's because you're striking the ground with a mantle that's holy, not H-O-L-Y, but H-O-L-E-Y. You're worn out. You're not hearing from God. You're not striking at the right place at the right time. You're worn out and you need to rest. Remember, there's rest in the floodgates. I don't know what day that was, day five, day six, day four. There's rest in the floodgates. Some of you need to go back and listen to all these again. We're putting out a whole YouTube series at the beginning of the year for those who missed this. They need to understand these principles. We're going to put it up on YouTube the first 40 days of January so people can start their year right. People around the world listening to these calls, these broadcasts. God, help us today to embrace the new mantle. I see that, Lord. Some of you, you're resisting a new mantle. Dear Lord Jesus, you're resisting it because you like the comfortability of the mantle that you have. You don't want to be stretched beyond that mantle. You don't want your mantle to be stretched. Let me say it again. You don't want to be stretched beyond that mantle and you don't want your mantle to be stretched. So you're resisting the new because you feel real capable where you are. Ah, ha, 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 ha. I just nailed it. Holy Ghost nailed it. Holy Ghost nailed it. You don't want a new mantle. You like your old raggedy mantle. You can tell every war you've been in. You see that hole right there in my mantle? You see that, you see that stain right there on, that, on my mantle? You see that rip in the back on my mantle? That was when I fought this devil. And that was when I fought that devil. And that was when I fought this devil. Stop looking behind you at your past victories and look forward because there's new wars and new victories for you to fight. But you got to get out of that comfort zone. You got to get out of that comfort zone. Some of you got to get out of that comfort zone. Arisa, you don't want the new mantle. You're going to have, you know what? Don't disobey the Lord, please. Would you please obey the Lord? Hallelujah. I live in a world called no comfort. The Lord always has me doing something new, something to stretch me, something different, something wild, something I never thought I could do and didn't even want to do. That's called living on the edge. And it took, him a, it took the Lord a while to get me to that place where I would say, okay, fine, yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll, yeah, mm-hmm, yeah, I'll do that. I used to be afraid of God's will because I thought if I surrendered to God's will, my life would be so radically changed that I wouldn't recognize it and I might not like it. 
But the reality is that when you surrender to the will of God, you'll, you, 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 your life will be <laughs> changed radically. But you will like it because you'll feel his presence and you'll wear that mantle with a confidence that you know that when you show up on assignment from God, whether that's in your workplace, in your family, in some community service you're doing or in your church or on some other assignment God sends you to a prayer strike or something in the nations, you'll wear that mantle with a confidence knowing that God's got you and you won't necessarily feel ready. But you know that God is able. I tell you what, Tony Lynn, I said a whole bunch of good stuff on this broadcast. Please send me these notes. My Lord, God is good. God is good. God is good. So, Father, we thank you for the new mantles. We thank you, Lord, for the new mantles. For the new mantles. For the new. We're not going to try to keep patching that worn out mantle that you told us to shed. Can you imagine if a, if a snake didn't shed its skin? The snakes and different animals. How about a snail in a shell? That's a better example. That's a better example. A, 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 or a turtle in a shell. A snail in a shell. They, they, they can't continue to grow in that old shell. So they have to shed the shell and find a new one. And that's where some of you are in your life. You can't grow in your anointing or in your grace or in your assignment. You can't expand in that old mantle some of you there's listen for some of you there's nothing wrong with the old mantle it's not even stained or torn or rugged or ragged or whatever it's just God's trying to give you a new God's trying to give you a new so father we thank you we will we'll press in whatever it is you want us to do we'll do it we receive new mantles we receive that upgrade we receive it in the name of Jesus for your glory. It's for your glory, God. It's not for our self-promotion. And Father, this, in this hour, I ask you to give the body of Christ discernment to, about who to connect to and who to disconnect from. All the showmanship and the, the braggarts and the, the liars and the, the thieves, the con artists in the body of Christ, God, let us see right through those schemes <laughs> making a show out of everything lying about things God help us Lord to see clearly through all these schemes give us a mantle that has discernment so we don't hit hook up with the wrong people in Jesus name amen amen praise God I like that broadcast there's something on that. I wish I could stay longer. I'm to, I've been studying mantles for a while, really. Puzzled and fascinated by how you can't put the old, the new patch on an, uh, on an old garment. I think I probably said it backwards before, but you know what I meant. Because it tears it. The new patch will tear the old garment, make it worse. And some of us just need to follow God and stop worrying about what people look like or, or what it looks like to people. Or some of us just need to get realigned. I'm going to hit that hard at some point after this 40 days. Some, some people just need to get realigned because you think you're with the one that's going to promote you and help you. And you're with the one that's just draining the life out of you and using you to build their own kingdom. Give us discernment, God. I can't get a little, I can't get off this. I'm going to have to, though. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Listen, if you want to sow into this broadcast today, I want to give you an opportunity to do that as we almost always do. I say almost always because sometimes we don't. But I want to give you an opportunity to, if this was revelation to you, if this, if this opened your eyes, if this made sense, if this caused you to get a nugget that can help somebody else who's going through a struggle, I want you to sow. Or if you just want to help us because we can't do what we're called to do without your help, we're a body. If you just want to be a blessing, if you want to help us spread these broadcasts, you know, we've got a mobile app coming out now. We're coming into the five year anniversary of this call. And it's absolutely fascinating and amazing to me what the Lord is doing. I'll be telling you later on this year about some different initiatives that we have going on so you can see what's going on here and why we do what we do, but I'm not going to do that today for sake of time. I'm in Tampa. 
where I grew up. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. If you want to sow, please do help us to help people. We'll help more people in 2019 than, than I ever have in the, in the course of my ministry because we're sowing some incredible seeds to different missions and sex trafficking organizations and different educational facilities and different things around the world in 2019. We'll talk more about that later, but so if you can, jenniferleclair.org slash give. jenniferleclair.org slash give. You can become a partner there. You can sow, you can become a one-time uh, giver there, jenniferleclair.org slash give. You can use the cash app, dollar sign Jennifer LeClaire. You can use the PayPal, paypal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire, paypal.me slash Jennifer LeClaire. You can use the P.O. Box, P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida 33303, P.O. Box 30563, Fort Lauderdale, Florida 33303. And you can use the text to give, 754-701-2161, text the word pray. 754-701-2161, text the word pray. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. Father, I thank you for this offering, God. I thank you, Lord, for the lives that you're changing through this ministry by your grace. It's only by your grace. Father, I thank you for the new mantles you've given me in my life and the lessons you've taught me, God. And I thank you, Lord, that you teach your people the lessons they need to know in this season. And you multiply this offering back to the givers in the name of Jesus. I bless all of our Awakening House of Prayer leaders around the world, all of our, uh, all of our uh, uh, Ignite Network members, all of the churches that are aligned with me. I bless them in the name of Jesus. All of my donors, all of my givers, I bless them in the name of Jesus. All of our Awakening House churches, I bless them in the name of Jesus. All of my staff and my volunteers and my vendors and my contractors, I bless everyone who's connected to me in any way. And I bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God is good. Listen, I am in Tampa for the Ascend Conference. I hope that you're getting here. It starts on Thursday night. I will be with uh, James Gall, Jonathan Ferguson, Jonathan Stidham, and of course, Ryan Johnson. You know, it's good to be with spiritual family. Everybody in the body of Christ is technically your family, but some people more so than others. And I was so glad to add Ryan Johnson to the mix. I was on Facebook with them. I said, you know what? I'm, I'm glad to have you as my family. And so real focused on family in this season. If you can get to Tampa, you can still drive. It's not too late. It's Wednesday. The conference starts Thursday night. We're having a special luncheon on Saturday. I think we put out an email that said Friday, but it's actually on Saturday. So we can, uh, uh, it's, it's too late for you to sign up for that. But if you are signed up, it is on Saturday. You can still sign up for the VIP, which is the day sessions, two day sessions, a Q&A, and, uh, two day sessions, a Q&A, and, uh, and the prophecy rooms. Now, you're not paying for prophecy rooms. That's just something we're, we're including in the VIP package, okay? So don't ask us if we can uh, do this or that or the other. This, if you're there, you'll get it. You'll have to uh, follow the protocols there, and, and we'll tell you all about that when you get there. Uh, if you want to watch online, you can. Online access is either day services or night services or both. You can register at jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com, jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com. You can register there at jenniferleclair.eventbrite.com. And uh, also go on my baba shakata go on my eventbrite because you're going to find a lot of stuff there as well my prophetic release tour i'll be in many cities around the nation they're not all posted there yet but many of them are you want to find out how to get me a prophetic release to do the tour in your city contact the office but don't contact us unless you have a venue if you don't have a venue don't waste your time don't waste ours because we're not going to do all the research there if you we're doing the research on the ones that we're planning ourselves, but if you're like burning up saying, we really need to have you here to do this, that's cool, but you got to help us on the ground. So do that before you contact us, right? That way, because uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say, go find a venue <laughs> and we're going to pray about it. So let us know in Jesus name. Amen. Well, we need a venue that holds, you know, at least 200, uh, not something that holds 50 or hundred. It's not going to be big enough. All right. God is good. God is good. God is good. Is there something else I'm forgetting? There's so much going on, but I'm sure I'm forgetting a lot. Oh, my dream book. It hit number one, my new book, the dream, uh, Decoding Your Dreams. 
Decoding Your Dreams, Decoding Your Dreams, it debuted yesterday and it hit number one on debut day. And I was so thrilled. I was watching for it a few times during the day. And then my publisher sent me the screenshot. It hit number one on Amazon. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Amen. If you have not picked up your copy, you can do that on Amazon. You can do it on Barnes and Noble. Or you can do it on my website. We're actually putting together a dream package where you're going to get uh, like a like a, a dream journal that we've created and then a, another book as well. So that'll be, I don't think that's up on my website yet. I wish it was, uh, but I don't know that it is. But I will let you know. Hallelujah. It's, it's, uh, it is on Audible as well. It's on Amazon on Audible. So go to Amazon and it's on Audible. I think it says MP3 or something, but it's click it because it's an audio version. And we will um, at some point have some dream packages or have something, but I don't think my, you can go look on my website if you want. I don't know that it's, I don't know that it's up. I, I, uh, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Please go and buy that. If you're interested, get the word out. Everybody has dreams, right? And many of us don't know what they mean because we've not spent enough time uh, digging into it. And it can be hard. It's complex. But my book, as you know, I'm a very practical teacher very practical teacher and so I believe in making things easy to understand and apply because if you can't understand and apply it it doesn't do you a darn bit of good amen so go please and get the word out about that go put a picture of it on your uh, on your if you've if you've uh, if you have bought the book take a picture of it on yourself and tag me on Instagram or tag me on Facebook or tag me somewhere and say hey this is a book and please also give it a five-star review because that helps it go up in the rankings you can follow me on Instagram at the Jennifer LeClaire. You can follow me on YouTube at youtube.com slash JN LeClaire. And you can also, uh, where you're going to get a lot of exclusive content, you can also follow me on my, web, uh, you can get on my email list. It's like the master how to get involved in everything, how to find out about everything. JenniferLeClaire.org. Go sign up for the email list there. I think those were the main things. Why is this conference Ascend? This is an Ignite Network conference. Ignite Network Conference. If you're not part of Ignite, you want to get part of, you want to be part of it. Go to ignitenow.org and sign up for it there. We are beginning to plan Awakening House of Prayers all over the place. Uh, if you're interested in launching an Awakening, and I've never, I never really, I think I mentioned this a couple of times, actually how to get involved in that. Um, we're particular about who we uh, receive into that, uh, but you can go to awakeninghouseofprayer.com and hit uh, plan to hop. Plant a hop. It's under ministries, the ministries tab. Plant a hop, and when you do that, you will um, you will find out how to send us uh, some information about you, so we can all begin to pray and talk. Amen. God is good all the time. I have some lunatic out there cursing me daily. I don't know who it is, but if you're on this broadcast, please show your head so we can block you. It's the craziest thing saying that I've done all this. I don't even know. They don't even have a real name. They're targeting certain leaders in the body of Christ. If you see something like that, don't send it to me. Just report it to Facebook or Periscope. I don't want to see it. I block them all. They're the yeah, loo, do, 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 loony. But that's all right because God loves them and I, I pray for their deliverance. And so I sometimes think the Lord allows me to cross paths with these people so that I can pray for their deliverance because a lot of people won't. They'll just get mad and curse them back. Amen. But God is good. The blessing of the block. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Help me get the word out about that book, would you? This is massive vindication for me because when I left Charisma Magazine, they cut my book deal. They said, your platform will not be as strong without us behind you, so we're, we're going to cancel your book deals. And, uh, and so they did. Charisma canceled my book deals, and within two weeks, I had the book deal for this book right here, Decoding Your Dreams. And uh, within two weeks, I had this contract for this new a book decoding your dreams and uh and it hit number one on debut day so it is vindication and i'm not trashing charisma they made a business decision based on what they thought i i thought it was uh i thought it was unfortunate and it seemed um a very unpleasant a way to go about a departure but you know what god is good god is good god is good god is good amen so thanks for your support and I will be back with you tomorrow. I've got to go find some place to get some hot beverages. Amen. Thanks for your support. I'll be back with you soon. Bless you. Vindication in the floodgates. That's right, Kimberly. Bless you.